is, do we want to learn slash and know of Jesus? And Jesus spoke to my heart about this message several weeks ago in reference to the title of this message, because all in light of what's going on in this world today, you know, and I've run across a lot of people in the street where people don't know Jesus, you know, and I try to talk to them and give them my number and stuff like that. And, 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 and the actions, you know, that take place in this world lately, if people were to get to, I, I know of a surety, if people were to get to know Jesus and learn of Jesus, we, this world would be a better place. And out of any and everything that we know about friends, family, ourselves, and even the world that we live in, nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, is more important than wanting to know about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there are two ingredients that I wanted to mention before I go into five subjects, six subjects about how we can learn to know Jesus and learn to grow in Jesus. But the two main ingredients that I'd like to mention first is uh, faith and belief. Of course, we need to have faith to know Jesus. And, you know, and we need to believe to know him, okay? But let's go into uh, my five subjects that the Lord spoke to my heart about in reference to getting to know and learn of this wonderful God that we serve. To know Jesus is to know understanding. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which is the Proverbs of Solomon, reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him. Who's the him? Jesus. And he shall direct your paths. Ain't that wonderful? And I don't, and I tell you, there's been a many a days, all of us, my, and I, I speak of myself too, that I've always leaned towards when certain trials and tribulations come up, you know, I have a tendency of leaning towards my understanding about things. You know, but it says in Proverbs, if you read that, it's real clear, real vivid. You know, lean towards God's understanding about things because God, understands the fact that we're sinners in his eyesight. God understands that we would mess things up any and every time. God understands that he possesses the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And with and we're his children. And we would have the and he had the total depend we have to totally depend on Jesus and be blessed with God's glory forever. Amen. To know God is to know understanding. The next subject that I want to uh, speak on and knowing Jesus, we're talking about getting to learn and know Jesus. To know Jesus is to know the guidance of Jesus. David talks about in Psalms 119 verses 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How wonderful that is. That's nothing but guidance. You know that God is, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, and I thought about this scripture when I read it the other day and other times I thought about it. I, um, I was, I'm always intrigued about Western. And my wife would tell you that I love Westerns, you know, and I was always intrigued about when they was in caves and they had uh, lamps to make it from one part of that cave to another part of that cave. And they needed them lamps, you know, just like we need that light in, in, in reference to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I remember me working at a place called Trans-American one day. This is another thought that came to my mind when I read this scripture. And we used to have to do key rounds. And believe me, uh, congregation, it was jet, jet black in that place, in that in this big uh, uh, warehouse part where we had to do those key rounds. And all I had was a little flashlight. 
what a mighty God we serve as far as him being a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Wow. The next subject that I like to uh, speak on that the Lord uh, laid upon my heart, to know Jesus is to know suffering. For real, for real, we don't know nothing about no suffering. You know, uh, we don't know uh, what, you know, what the feelings and some, the personal feelings and emotion that God went through when he suffered on that cross. But Paul talks about in Roman, let me, let me read this. Paul talks about in Roman chapter five, verses three to five. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. Ain't that wonderful? You know, and I, I looked at this and I said, you know what? You know, thank you for allowing me to do a little teaching this morning, more so than preaching, because we all know that God did more te teaching than he did preaching. Uh, I looked at this uh, uh, scripture once again, uh, uh, perseverance, and um, that word perseverance uh, uh, amounts to persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Wow. I mean, you have to go through all that and just to, and, and still have to suffer. What a mighty God we serve. Paul talks about Roman, Romans. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Amen. Suffering, you know, this, I look at that, I say, wow, you know, this, 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 the suffering part doesn't even compare to the glory that will be, that is revealed in us, the glory that is revealed in Jesus. Wow. The next subject I'd like to go to is uh, that the Lord has laid upon my heart. Paul talks about in Romans also the how to know Jesus. Bear with me. To know Jesus is to know patience. Wow. That's a tough one for me because. We don't have patience on a, on a consistent basis every day. People get on our nerves. Certain things happen. We don't, you know, we, we go to supermarkets and uh, we, oh man, this line is long. I don't want to get in that line. But I, I see myself, just, just to add a little something, I see myself sometimes try to practice patience though, for real, for real. Because sometimes I get in the longer line just to try to develop some patience somehow. There's nothing like getting patience from the Lord and save our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me read this uh, Romans uh, chapter 12, verses 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. prayer. Amen. I looked up, when I looked at this scripture, I looked up that word affliction. And that word affliction uh, equals something that causes pain. Or suffering. Now, you, and I and I asked God. I said, "You mean to tell me that something that's causing me a lot of pain and a lot of suffering, I had to still scrounge up some patience?" Wow. But you know what? That's why I praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because He showed so much patience. You know after suffering a lot, after perseverance, you know, a lot of times, you know, on the cross, I know patience, you know, and God allows us to, to develop that patience on a consistent basis when we get to know him. Paul talks about also in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, we're talking about getting to know Jesus, getting to know Jesus and learn of Jesus and having getting and is having patience. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Wow. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. 
nothing but patience in that scripture. You know, and I and I, I thought about this in this scripture. I was thinking about eagle. This it's 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 wonderful how the uh, the writer Paul talks about an eagle in this particular scripture because if you know whether you know it or not, an eagle is one of the most patient creatures on this earth. You know, and it's amazing how they soar in the air and they soar and fly and look for carcasses, you know, and things of that nature. But you know what they do it with? A lot of patience, you know. But like I said, nothing beats, I just wanted to explain that to you. Nothing beats the patience that God is capable of giving us on a consistent basis. We trust in the Lord, believe in him, Lord, uh, give me that patience that I need. I need, I stand in the need of prayer right now, almighty God. I need patience right now. And the almighty God will give it to you. The, the next subject, we're getting, we're getting close. The next subject is to know Jesus is to know wisdom. In the book of James, James chapter one, verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously all to all without finding fault. Wonderful. God allows us and gives us wisdom, you know, and don't and won't even find fault in us. You know, I, sometimes I sit down and my wife will tell you, sometimes I sit down and I watch First Take. It's this, pro, this sports program that come on called First Take. And these guys have a lot of wisdom. Uh, they talk about different subjects and different uh, things, but they, 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 they go back and forth and they find fault in one another, you know? But that's not the kind of God that we serve. That's not how God treated, treats us as far as wisdom is concerned. We can learn wisdom, you know, find out about the wisdom, find out about the wisdom of Jesus and he won't find fault in us. That's the kind of God that I want to serve. And last but not least, I would be remiss if I were not to mention that the last but not least subject on how we get, to, do you want to know Jesus? Is to know love. Wow. Hmm. His word is everlasting to everlasting. Love. Jesus is love. Love is Jesus. Let me break down. I just want to break down this word love. I, I, I think this, I, I guess this is a Ronald, Ronaldism. It's uh, the L represents loyalty. The O represents obedience. The V represents victory. The E represents everlasting. And that word, like I said, that word love, like we know, that word love represents Jesus because he's a perfect, loyal person. He's, a, he's perfect in obedience. Satan is a defeated foe. He's, Jesus has the victory and always will have the victory. And that E, everlasting and everlasting love. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Let me share this real fast. This is the kind of guy that I want to go to. I want to mention a few miracles uh, real briefly. I know I'm going into a lot of things, but this, do you want to know Jesus? The feeding of 5,000 with five loaves of bread, two fish, Jesus, and 12 baskets of pieces of barley bread left over, John 6, 5, 14. That's the kind of God that I want to know. John 2, chapter 2, verses 1 and then through 11. Jesus in the changing changes water into wine. Wow. Can you change water into wine? Can I change water into wine? No way. That's the kind of God that I want to know. John 6, verses 16 and tw through 24. The Jesus walking on water. Go out to the uh, specific ocean and try to walk on water. You'll never make it. 
what power to walk on water. That's the kind of guy that I want to know. And last, John chapter nine, you don't have to read them now. I'm just running these verses off. These are miracles. I want to know a God like this. John chapter nine, verses one through seven, Jesus, the healing of a blind man from birth. Doctors can't even save people from birth sometimes. From birth, a lot of complications from birth. That's the kind of God that I want to know. Just in case, just, uh, just sharing those memories, who on God's green earth wouldn't want to know a God that picks us up, turns us around, and places our feet on the solid ground? Who wouldn't want to know a God, serve and know a God, they want a God that has healed and continues to heal our bodies from sickness? Who, who wouldn't want to serve and know a God that has given us his gospel as a direct source of true guidance for our lives? Who wouldn't want to know a God that truly loves us, saves us, and makes us his own? Who wouldn't want to know a God who died for our sins? Yes, he died. Yes, he died. Yes, he died. Until a Roman centurion truly said, this is the son of God. Yes, he died until the world started reeling and rocking. Yes, he died. But early, early, early Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. He's wonderful. He's powerful. He's awesome. He's long-suffering. He's patient. He's wisdom. His wisdom is tremendous. His understanding, he's understanding. He guides us. King Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. Who wouldn't want to know a God like that. I'm getting to the end of our sir, of, of my of my teaching. The more we want to know Jesus, the more patient God is with us, and the more God shows us how to develop patience in our lives. The more we want to know about Jesus, the more God shows us the true meaning of suffering. We don't know nothing about no suffering. The more we want to know Jesus, the more God shows us how unique and powerful his wisdom is. The more we want to know Jesus, the more God shows us the true meaning of understanding, and we'll understand it better by and by. The more we want to know Jesus, the more God is, is truly a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The more we want to know Jesus, the more God shows us his agape love, which is, which is a love, an unconditional love, no conditions on it, a love, a love that definitely can feel, that we can feel within our heart, our minds, our bodies, our souls, and an everlasting love. That's the kind of Jesus that I want to know. And how can we truly get to know this Lord. Here we go. The Biblios. Join the local church. Get saved. The Biblios. We truly learn from this Biblios. The Bible teaches us how to get to know Jesus. The Bible teaches us character. The Bible, this Bible, this Biblios teaches us integrity. This Bible shows and teaches us the love of Jesus. The Bible is a light to our path, a lamp to our feet, and a light to our path. The Bible teaches, will teach, will show and teach us everything we need to know about Jesus. This, the Bible is the only way we learn of the only true and living God. I'm telling you. This Bible will revolutionize your life. His word is a strength to, our, to the weak. His word is joy to the sorrowful. His word is healing for the sick. His word is deliverance for the oppressed. That's the kind of God that I want to learn and know. Before the mountain was formed, he is. Be, he is. Before the sun was shaping, he is. Before the 
Before there was a heaven to dwell in, he is. Before there was a cherubim or seraphim, before there was a when or a where, before there was a then or even a there, God, the everlasting Father, that's the God that I want to know. Do you want to know Jesus? I was on my way to, to a devil's hell. I was not fit to live. And I was scared to die. But I heard, forgive me. But I heard the voice of God, Jesus, saying, come unto, come unto me and rest, lie down. Hallelujah. Lie down, my weary one. Lie down. Lie your head on my breast. And when I heard him call me, I came to Jesus. Yes, I came to Jesus. Just as I was. Weary, wounded, and sad. And I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. Jesus, you're wonderful, wonderful Jesus. That's the Jesus that I want to know. And in closing, my, my executive pastor, Crystal, let me show you this. She, it was like a breath of fresh air when she gave me this. She don't know how much this means to me, but I'm letting her know publicly. I'm letting her know personally about this book right here. And it's entitled, it's a, it's a life application study Bible. Awesome. There's scriptures in our regular Bibles, the King James version, NIT version, so forth and so on. But this particular Bible here breaks down uh, breaks things down more clearly, more, 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 more good, you know. And I want to read this before I close. I want to read this because this is the kind of God that I want to serve. The S Psalms 23 in this particular Bible reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. Amen. Forgive me. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Amen. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Awesome, man. You honor my anointing, you, you honor me by, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. That's the kind of God that I wanna serve. Let's pray. Father in heaven, almighty God, we thank you for another opportunity to get to know more and more about Jesus, to learn of his patience, to learn of his wisdom, to learn of his guidance, to learn of his understanding in our lives. And we'll understand it better by and by. Almighty God, in, the, in light of all that's been going on in this dark and dying world, world, we thank you for your marvelous light. The book of Ezra, almighty God, verse chapter seven, verse 14 says, this 
mentions that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them their sin and will heal their land. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray with thanksgiving and all God's children say amen. 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 And I would just want to say this uh, real briefly. I feel in my heart that somebody's listening to me right now that don't know Jesus wants to know Jesus right now, you know? And I just ask real briefly that you would pray this prayer with me. And it's as simple as ABC. And I ain't talking, God bless his soul, I ain't talking about no Michael Jackson who sang that song, ABC. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about getting saved. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I believe that you died for me, almighty God. And I confess that I can't do nothing without you. Come into my life, almighty God, and save me. I yield, I yield, I yield, I yield, almighty God. What must I do to be saved? And I believe in my heart, I believe in my heart that if you prayed that prayer, God is going to start from this point on to revolutionize your life. And I just want to close with this and shut up. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Do you want to know Jesus? Amen. 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 Praise God for the message and the messenger. I got some great points there. Understanding, guidance, suffering, patience, wisdom, and the love in knowing Jesus. I, I, want, I want to let the church know that we thank God for Minister Washington. Uh, when we first came to the church and we had that first um, uh, picnic thing outside, we had the first uh, outside uh, fellowship for the community. And um, he saw, I guess, one of the signs at the ice cream store and then he came to uh, Bible Baptist Church, and uh, and and 